Hello, welcome. We're going to work on this problem right here, which is to write a string of equations um, for the lines in the graph here. And these, these lines, I got it from Desmos, uh, which is a great web application for graphing. So we're actually going to go through these equations for the red and the green, and then we're going to use some shorthand notation. Uh, and you could try this right in Desmos to see how it works. Now, math is really about playing, right? Essentially, pattern hunting and playing with ideas. So um, feel free to watch this video, but also to kind of play around with Desmos uh, and see what different equations will get you. Uh, if a set of equations doesn't work, play around with it, tweak it until you get something that does work. So we're looking here at, at these lines. I'm going to focus in on the red lines first because there's less of them. So this line right here and every other one below. And the first thing I notice, and I don't really know the answer yet, but I notice that they're all parallel, right? So all these lines are running along in the same direction. They're parallel, they're never going to touch, that's what parallel means. And that also means they have the same slope, right, the same steepness. So first thing I'm going to do is find out the slope of all these red lines. And the same is true for the green, right? You see that the green are all also parallel. So what I'm going to do in both cases, I'm going to find the slope of one of the lines and then use that for all of them. All right, so let's solve this. I'm just zoom I zoomed out here because these increments are going up by 1. And that's less confusing to me. When I first tried to make this video, I made a mistake with that. Uh, I forgot that the increments weren't going up by one. That misled me. So now we're on the scale. We're going up by ones. And we'll start with the green lines. To find the equation for the green line, I'm going to start the y-intercept, the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And that's the point 0, 5. Then I'm going to look at my slope. I'm going to say, OK, if I go to this friendly point over here, it's easy to read. How is my line changing in terms of the rise? How much is going up, in this case, twice? And how much is it going over twice? Let's go into the point 2, 7. And now I have all the information I need to write the equation for this line. It's y equals, start with our intercept, 5 plus our slope. Our slope is just our rise divided by our run, right? This up-down motion, 2, divided by this left-right motion, 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's our slope times x. That's our first equation. Then notice all the other equations are parallel, and the only thing changing is the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are going all the way down to negative 5. So if I was to write all the equations, I would just keep writing them over and over again, but changing the first number, which is the y-intercept, to go from 5 all the way down to negative 5. And th that would be my sequence of equations. On Desmos, I can also write this. Use square brackets going from 5 dot 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 to negative 5 plus 1x, this gives me all of the lines um, that we include here in this list. It includes all the lines with a slope of 1 from th and with y-intercepts from 5 to negative 5. And with the red lines, we can use the same approach. I'll just start here on the bottom. Uh, this y-intercept is the point 0, negative 3. And my slope is now going down twice and then over twice in the positive direction on the run. It goes to the point 2, negative 5. So here, when I write the equation for the red line, I'm going to write, um, I'll write over here, y equals negative 3, our slope, I mean our intercept, excuse me, minus 1x. And what I did to get the minus 1 was divide negative 2 by 2, and that's negative 1. Now I could have written plus negative 1x, that's also equivalent, but I just chose to write minus because it's one less symbol. I don't need a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus, which is equivalent. I just need a minus. We assume it's minus a positive 1x. Then we just move up to negative 2, right? These inter oh, I made a mistake. Not negative 2, but negative 2 and a half. You see this right here? Right? This is negative 3, and this is negative 2 in between negative 2 and a half. The intercepts on the red lines are every half increment. So it's going to go negative 2.5 minus 1x. Then it's going to go to negative 2 minus 1x all the way to y equals um, 3 minus 1x. If we're going to write this in Desmos, I'm going to use my list notation, except I need to start by telling Desmos, which is a nice online application for graphing, to go in half increments, negative 3, negative 2 and a half. All right, and then I can just put dot, 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 all the way up to 3 to get my list. I don't know if we need this comment here, if it throws it off. You could definitely just put the dot, 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 minus 1x. 
uh, by, by setting the first jump to a half, all the subsequent numbers will also jump up by one half. So once we set that, we've got it. Here, if I isolate this one green line, right, and I say, what's the y-intercept? Well, here it is. It's the point 0, negative 3. And what's the x-intercept? That's this point right here. That's the point 3, 0. If I had to label my slope, I would label it like this. Uh, my rise is this number. It's going from negative 3 to 0, so positive 3 equals the rise. And then the run is also going to equal positive 3. So I'm labeling everything, and my slope, m, is 3 over 3, or 1. Now I can use this information to write the equation, y equals negative 3, or y-intercept, plus 1x. And I can use that equation to fill out this table. When x is 0, that would mean, let me scroll over so you can see this, using our equation, y equals negative 3 plus 1x. So if x is 0, that's what this is saying right here, the point where x is 0, what does y equal? Well, y equals negative 3 plus 1 times 0. And that's negative 3 plus 0, just negative 3. That's our answer. So this is saying when x is 0, the y value is negative 3. You can see it right here on the graph, right? This point right here is the point 0, negative 3, which is the y-intercept. What about when x is 1 half? Well, y equals negative 3 plus 1 times a half. That's negative 3 plus a half, which is negative 2.5, or negative 2 and a half. And you can see this here on the graph as well. Let me just change my tool here. Here's 1, here's a half right here. Go down. You can see that the y value when x is a half right here is 2 and a half, or negative 2 and a half which is what's happening. Remember what the equation is doing. All this equation is doing is it's telling you the relationship between all the x's and y's on this line. So in the last one, if y is 200, what is x? Well, what I would do is plug in 200 for y and then solve for x, right? So basically, what do I add to negative 3 to get 200? And that's what this is asking. To solve it, I could add 3 to both sides and see the answer. x would be 203. And this makes sense because essentially if you look at uh, all the y values, all of the y values, as this equation says, are 3 less than 1x or x minus 3. Same idea as negative 3 plus x. So all the y values, like 200, that's 3 less than 203. Just like negative 3 is 3 less than 0 and so on and so forth. So we can see that being preserved. All right, hope this helped.